everyone at home or wherever you happen to be. Welcome back to the next semester of Art Explorations for Kids. I'm Miss Jamie, and we're going to be talking about Jackson Pollock today. He had some amazing, fun techniques that you're going to have a blast getting to play with. And we're going to make this happen with our very own snowy landscape. So let's just go ahead and get started. What we're going to do first is get a watercolor background down, do a wash so that we have something to work with. All right. so. We're going to take our water bin here, get our brush nice and saturated, come over to our Soho watercolors, and we're going to pick a blue. I'm going to go with this blue down here, and you can follow along with me, or you can pick your own blue, and just gently rock back and forth in the well to make sure that you get plenty of paint on this brush. And remember, you will want to have something under your paper because we're going to go from edge to edge covering this entire paper with this wash. All right, so here we go. And remember, just make nice, broad strokes. Then once you find your brush getting a little dry, you can dip it again in the water, grab some more paint, and just keep going. And you're not trying to get a perfectly even color. What you really want is to have a really pretty textured sky because once we're done with this, we're going to go in and add some trees in our foreground. So we'll be covering up some of what we do. If there's a spot that you don't like, don't worry about it. There's a chance we can put a pretty little tree right over that. And once you start to get to the bottom, you notice your paper slipping, you can gently just barely hold on to the edge of your paper with one or two fingers. Don't let your finger get into the paint. Only allow enough pressure with those supporting fingers to help you get this last bit of paint onto your paper. Okay, so I'm happy with my wash and I'm gonna go ahead and let it dry. And this may take, you know, five, 10 minutes, but once yours is dry, come back and we'll go ahead and start putting in our trees. All right, so now your painting's dry. Now. I had one ready to go and I just wanted to show you something that happens when you do work with really saturating paper is you get some of a bend um, and you may not want that. You might want it a little bit flatter. So just to work with, you can just gently fold back where you see your paper is folding upward. Go in the opposite direction and that doesn't mean crease just means gently bend. You're just encouraging the paper to sit a little flatter. All right. So now this is a snowy scene and we've already had a lot of snowfall in here. So I'm going to take my white pastel, my white oil pastel, and I'm going to give a ground line. You say you have your paper set up into about three sections. I'm going to put snow on the bottom third. 
and just go, go, go right, right across. In the same direction. There's no need to go up and down, right and left. This is snow. It's fallen nice and soft into a, a sheeted blanket. And we want to make sure that we show that by uh, rendering this. by drawing in the same direction. Now you'll notice if you're using a lot of your pastel that you're starting to come up on the paper part. Now this isn't a problem at all. All you need to do is take the little corner of your pastel and tear away what you don't need so that you can continue to work. You see, just like I'm doing here. And there you have more pastel to work with. And don't pull all of it off because this also helps whatever of the label you keep on to keep your hands clean. And now I'm just finishing up that snowy drift down here. All right. And now we can begin adding in our trees. So I'm really loving this cool, peaceful aesthetic I have going on. And I think I'm going to stick with probably some blues and purples for my trees. So again, you can follow along with me if you would like, but you certainly don't have to. I'm going to choose this blue, sky blue, for my first tree. And I'm going to start it over here on the left side. I'm just going to bring the trunk down and give it some some roots. Now you know how you don't see those roots going down into the ground. They're in the snow bank. So you don't have to worry about getting so detailed because there's going to be snow that's covering up parts of those roots. I'm coloring in the bottom here and coming up the other side of the trunk. And also don't worry about filling in your tree so that you have perfectly flat color. This adds texture and it adds a lot more interest to your picture. And it even gives your snowy trees that appearance that some snow is actually sticking onto the sides. So now I'm going to add in some branches, just pulling off to the sides. And I'm just doing this where I feel like my tree would branch off. And so this is up to you and your creativity. Remember, when we look at nature, no two branches are alike. They go up, they go down, diagonal. So just have fun with this. Okay. I think I'm happy with my first little snowy tree. So now that we have completed our first tree, I'm going to go ahead and show you one that I have been working on before, just to give you some inspiration. So as you can see, I decided to go with three trees, and you can add more. So just remember that we're going to be adding Jackson Pollock's technique on top of this, and try to leave a little bit of space for us to work with. So we're going to go ahead and pause the video, give you some time to work, and when we come back, we're going to get to the really fun stuff. A 
Okay, so we're back and we've all made our trees and our snowy scene and now we get to practice Jackson Pollock's technique. And what was great about Jackson Pollock's technique is oftentimes he got really dancy and just splattered paint all over the place. He liked to work on flat surfaces so he could see all around. So we're gonna imitate that today but with a little bit more of a controlled technique. So what you wanna do is get your brush nice and saturated to the point of dripping and go ahead and apply it to your white and you really really want to make sure that you're seeing bubbles that the pan is what we call being activated and you can see I'm getting a whole lot of that white on my brush so to start our snow and you can pick any area on your picture you're going to hold it from the back and gently tap. And this controlled motion just means that we are not causing our family a heart attack by painting the walls. We're not getting it in our eyes and our faces. And we don't have colorful pets running around the house later. Now I'm going to try some of this silver in here. I remember light taps. If you find that you're having trouble getting the paint off the brush, you can start doing a, a slightly heavier tap. But if you realize that that's just not working, just go back to your water and saturate your brush with the paint a little bit more. Having a lot of water for this is good in your paint wells. Now, snow you typically see is white, but this is our painting, and why do we just have to have boring old white snow? Why don't we have some purple snow? I'm gonna come in here, get my brush nice and wet, and pick up this really pretty shiny purple. Look at that. Okay, so I love where my painting is right now, and I'm going to go ahead and stop adding snow. However, if you want to keep going and make your scene as snowy as possible, then go right on ahead and make it the snowiest scene there ever was. So this is going to end the beginning portion of this project. If you're happy with your painting where it is, then thank you for following along. I've had so much fun with you. If not, then please stay tuned and we're gonna start the advanced portion. So welcome back to the advanced portion. Now we're gonna start adding in a few more details with our acrylic paints. And we just wanna add some little snow banks in here where um, the snow has accumulated in the branches and maybe since we added some colorful uh, snowflakes in here maybe we'll add some some purplish snow down here at the bottoms of the trees as well so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to use titanium white purple lake and crimson of our creative inspirations acrylic colors you don't have to use these colors but these are the ones that I'm choosing to use and I'm gonna go ahead make sure my brush is clean from working with our watercolors previously a good way to do that is just to do the paper towel test and you can see there's no paint coming off so that way I don't risk contamination in the new set of paints I'm gonna be working in so, I'm going to go ahead and dip into my white. 
And just here, I'm going to start dabbing on just light, fluffy packs of snow. And I'm using this dabbing technique just to give it that illusion of the soft snow that's just fallen. You know, it has kind of that cotton. You want to just kind of curl up in it like a cloud, but it's very cold. And I'm just picking spots where I think the snow should be. So this is completely up to you. You can follow along with me and put your snow in similar areas. Maybe your tree is completely covered in snow. Remember, you don't need to put too, too much acrylic paint on your brush. If you end up going into it like this, you're probably going to end up with a mess and have more paint than you can work with. So just enough to cover your brush and come back because you can always go back to your palette and grab more paint. Also be gentle when you're using this technique. You don't want to jam your bristles down into your paper and ruin your brushes. Okay, and like I said, I had put some of the colorful snow splatters in here. I'm going to mix a little bit of this purple and this red to get a color similar to uh, that watercolor I had and a little bit of white just to lighten it up. I don't want it to be too dark because this is still my colorful snow. When I think of snow, I think light, light, soft colors. I'm going to bring in some down here. Where some of these pink flakes have fallen pink and purple flakes. Maybe you want to be a little bit more advanced and try doing multiple colors. Let's see. I'm going to add a little bit more purple in this little snow bank here. Maybe I want to bring it up into the trees a bit. This little dabs. Okay. And now you just want to make sure whenever you're done to give your brush a good cleaning. Acrylic paint, if you leave it in, will dry and destroy your brush. So give it a good cleaning. Do the paper towel test. Make sure there's nothing on it. And you're done. So now we have our completed Jackson Pollock inspired snowy piece. And I really hope that you all had as much fun working on this with me as I did with you. I hope that you check out other artists that are into abstract expressionism and I hope to see you all on the next Art Explorations for Kids. <laughs>